how much were the moves this offseason motivated by not just adding talent, but maybe changing the mix and the group and the dynamic that goes on on the court, off yeah. the court, all of it? I, I don't want this taken out of context, right? Because I do think, like, the, the people that we lost were really impactful and really good. I mean, Marcus won a ton of games here and did a, you know, was was really a good Celtic for nine years and, and you know, obviously brought everything to the table and left it all on the court, and people appreciated him for that here. Rob Williams, we all saw grow and become a really good player here, right? Like Malcolm, you know, and on down the line. So, like, I think that, you know, those guys all gave us a chance to be where we've been the last few years, and we need to be thankful for that and recognize that's not a given this year. Like, it's got to – you've got to – Go out there, perform, win in the regular season, and then win in the playoffs to even get back to the stages we've been. Um, but we do think that this mix has a chance to do that um, and to hopefully, you know, give ourselves an opportunity to win it. But, um, you know, I think adding Drew and, you know, obviously Chris Stapps, you have on both ends of the floor just a, dy you know, a, a dynamic that I think can really help us. And, and I do think that, you know, one of the things for us is, is Jason and Jalen are 25, 26, turned 26, 27 this year. Like, th it's really, like, those guys are have always been good leaders by example and will use their voices to, um, to help. Now it's like, okay, our voices we've got to use to help. We've got to make sure that we put our signature on this in every which way. And I think that's a good. It's a good time for that. It's for thirteen. Us. It's thirteen now. Yeah, I mean, right? that, and that, they're that age. And right? That's not against Marcus. Like, a lot of people look at it and say, "Well, not, not you know, at Marcus all." Marcus was overbearing, but it seems like they did defer to him at times. You know, when you're a team leader and you're in that locker room, one guy speaks, and it felt like it was Marcus's a lot of time. Well, and I think the most important thing about that is Marcus. The reason why those guys are where they are now, right? Yeah, is because of all the people that sewed into him, right? And Marcus was a huge part of that. Right. And I think that that's, you know, that's something that, you know, Marcus was really good at it and he'll be really good at it in Memphis. Um, but those guys were, you know, we'll lean on those guys quite a bit. We still have the the old wise sage and Al and, and you know, when he speaks, everybody listens. And I think yeah. we're seeing a lot of that with Drew. I think Derek White having, you know, more opportunity is a good thing. Um, so we're excited about kind of how this all fits together, but we lost we lost real guys that are real competitors that were really good teammates and people. The evolution of Peyton Pritchard is an interesting one. He's gone from a guy who maybe struggled to get minutes at times to at one point reportedly asking for a trade, and now he's back on an extension. And uh, how are you, you know, looking at him as a player and how he's going to be a big part of this team now going forward? You know, um, well, first of all, I think that Peyton is as hard a worker as there is. Um, he's super reliable. He always has a chip on his shoulder. That's not going to change no matter what. New contract, no new contract, whatever. He's just a he's a he's a feisty competitive dude. And you know, like last year when he was frustrated, he had every right to be frustrated. But he also was cognizant that you know Brogdon's really good, White's really good, Smart's really good. Um, but that doesn't mean that he has to accept that or feel like he can't compete with anybody on any given day and it's obvious that he can and for me my favorite part about him is that he didn't like feel bad about the experience because he wasn't playing or getting attention or he just felt because he likes to play basketball like he just loves it he's the type of kid you would recruit to buck oh. if you were there right like I mean, oh, I'd recruit, I'd, I'd try to get this whole team right yeah. now. I mean, we got we've got a we got a whole team full of really good people. But yeah, I mean, when I left when I left Butler, um, I know for a fact they went out to West Lynn and tried to recruit him. Right. <laughs> so like it doesn't surprise you, right? I no. mean, he's tough. Jim Rat. Yeah. And, he, and, and he his can, coach raves about him. And he can shoot. Joe Joe speaks glowingly about yeah. Peyton. He, he and Joe have a lot in common. Yeah. That's you know they oh, they they, uh -oh. they, they uh -oh. could they could. <laughs> Uh -oh. I could, they got the crazy if, if they, <laughs> in a good way. If they played one on one, it would it, Joe wouldn't score because he can't shoot, but it would at least be entertaining. <laughs> I'm, I'm Joe would win in the fight against anybody, I think, because you know, Joe's oh, yeah. not going to get drug out of the building. No, there's no way. Well, he's learning all the moves too, <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, we've heard I won't say how many moves he said it would take to kill any of us, but it was not that many. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. He, he said it, he would do it in short order. He had it He'd all be figured dead right out. Somebody stage. asked me if I wanted to join him in some of that training, and I said, no, I'm good with golf. <laughs> yeah. 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 We'll yeah. just have to figure That's out it. how to get yeah. better at the things we can control. <laughs> I'm sure you've got in your mind how this season goes well. The things that will happen to have this be a success. What's your biggest fear on the other side of that? That things Oh, I don't, don't ever think well. about it going well. I'm just preparing for all the normal. You so, know. So, so and next next all... Wednesday, next Wednesday, we know it all starts. Yeah. We yeah. know the overreaction on every which way starts. I yep. mean, we went into last year's playoffs and said, we know after every loss, this is the narrative. I mean, you could. It's not hard to figure out what the narratives are going to be after every loss or every win, right? And so, how do we just navigate that as well as we can. I'm I'm not worried about our team embracing roles. I'm not worried about our team, you know, competing and really putting it out there to win. Um, we'll have to navigate, you know, a long season. Hopefully, knock on wood, we can stay healthy. Um, but we're going to keep our eyes open and how we can help our team both within these walls and outside these walls and over the next eight, you know, six months or whatever and try to put our best foot forward. But by no means do we think it's going to be perfect. And this is probably the part of coaching that I take with me. You don't ever feel comfortable. You don't ever feel like it's not super fragile. You're always alert to what's next, right? And so, yeah. like, it's not, nothing's going to be a surprise. So we just have to make sure we navigate as well as we can and stick together. This, this is a really good group of people, coaches and players. I'm really excited about them. But we keep, got a long road ahead. Keep, keep that ownership down nice and tight, too, because, like, after that first practice, they were sitting up here with you, and you like, wow, it's like the greatest, pra <laughs> greatest practice we've ever seen, man. It's going to be huge. you got to keep them in their seats a little bit. It was a good practice. What gets excited? It was <laughs> a good practice, yeah. yeah. That's right. Good. But, that, see, well, back but if, you're here yeah. For, if you're here for two weeks, you'll see some bad ones, too. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But what you describe is a real anxious existence as oh, a it's, coach or an executive. No, it's just the way. I think, yeah. I think it's the way you have – and it's not – you know, I might have described it as a fear of failure when I was 25 or 30 or 35 or whatever. Now that I'm in my mid 40s, it's more, you know, it's just the way it is. You just have to be alert. And you and if you're ever comfortable, you're going to get caught, right? The day you stop working is the day you stop being good, right? Like you just have to like stay the course, put everything you got into it, be ready to hit the curveballs and let the chips fall where they may. When you say narrative, and you know you know what the narrative is going to be coming away from a loss, are you talking about internally amongst the team, or you just mean like everywhere? No, I think it's more like just being able to say, okay, this is what's real. This is what we need to improve on. This is how we get there. I, the team, 99.9% .9 of the time, right, teams are in this sanctuary that we're in right here that are all together together that never leave that Hive this is mentality yeah and this is like they they really do connect yeah. on that and they and they bond over that but it is there's a lot of noise when there's expectations there's a lot of noise when there's belief that your team is good and and being that from the first day of the season is a challenge and so our guys i think have handled it really well throughout the years that have been here we've added some guys you know and drew like drew especially he's yeah. been through it all he and he's as good of a person and as well grounded of a teammate as you could be around. So um, we think that we have the right people to navigate it. But I just think you have to be able to navigate the noise throughout the year. Yeah.